Let's go over math, grade 4, module 6, lesson 6, decimal fractions, topic B, tenths and hundredths. So here we have 1 and 22 hundredths. I'm going to first represent that using area models. But I have one whole. So when I do my area model, I'm going to have the whole thing shaded in. But what do I do with the 22 hundredths? Well, in cases when you have a hole and you have a part of another hole, you're going to use more than one area model. So I'll begin by having this one to represent the one. I have the whole area model shaded in purple. Now, how many more do I have? I have 22 hundredths of another piece like this. And since it's hundredths, I'm going to use one of these grids that have a hundred pieces. But they're still the same size. And in this case, I have 22 of them shaded in. So this is 10, this is 20, and this is supposed to be 2. There. One hole and 22 hundredths. And if I write this as a decimal, I would write it like this. 1 and 22 hundredths. And notice when I got to the decimal, I said and. 1 and 22 hundredths. Let's try another one. This time we'll try 1 and 38 hundredths. So again, I'm going to start with an area model to represent my 1. That means the whole area model will be shaded in. This time I'm going to do it in green. 38 hundredths of another model will be shaded in. So that would look like this. 10, 20, 30, and 8 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this area model is representing 1 whole and 38 hundredths. And if I write this as a decimal, it would be 1 and 38 hundredths. 1 decimal 38. Let's try another one. Let's try 1 and 81 hundredths. So I'm going to have a model that's completely shaded in to represent my one hole. And then I'm going to have another model that has 81 out of 100 shaded in. So that would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 1. So this is representing 1 and 81 hundredths and written as a decimal it would be 1 decimal 81. 1 and 81 hundredths. So let's try this with a number line. We have 1 and 22 hundredths and I want to see where that would be on a number line. So I'm going to set my number line up and I'm going to start at 0 and I'm going to end at 2. I'm going to do that because I know 1 and 22 hundredths is going to be between 0 and 2. So that means one hole would be here right in the middle of that number line. So on my number line, I'm going to begin with my hole 1. And I'm going to jump from 0 to 1. So that's my one hole. Now I need to go 22 out of 100 more. Well, between the 1 and the 2, I have 10 parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
With 22 hundredths, I have 2 tenths. I have a 2 in the tenths place. So I can, my next jump is going to be 2 tenths. So now I've jumped my one hole, and I've jumped my 2 tenths. Now all I have left are my 2 hundredths. That means that the space between this 2 tenths and this 3 tenths is going to have to be separated into 10 parts and I'm going to have to jump two of those parts. That would put me about right here. So I have jumped my one hole, I have jumped two tenths, and I have jumped two hundredths. So now I can tell that one and twenty-two hundredths is going to be located right here on my number line. If I want to show this with an area model, I can show with an area model just like we did before. I have one hole shaded in, and I have 22 of another. So if we think about this one hole taking us to the 1, then 22 parts to the next hole would be what this would represent on the number line. Let's try another one. This one is 3 and 46 hundredths. I'm going to say that this part of my number line is going to represent 3, and this part over here is going to represent 4. I know that 3 and 46 hundredths is going to be somewhere between the 3 and the 4. So, since I'm starting at my 3, I have 46 hundredths that I need to go. So I'm going to do my tenths first. I'm going to go 4 tenths. 1, 2, 3, 4. If I do my 4 tenths, then all I have left to do is 6 hundredths. And that's going to, should be between the 4 tenth mark and the 5 tenth mark. That would be where six hundredths would be. So three and forty-six hundredths, written as a decimal, would be here on this number line. And if I want to show what this would look like with area models, I would need to have three models completely shaded in. And on this model, I would have to have four columns completely shaded in, and then six parts of another, or 46 out of 100 shaded in. Alright, so in this activity, what we're going to do is we're going to find the matches for these amounts written in unit form. So here I have three ones, eight tenths, and I need to come over here and look for the matches to go with that. So how would three ones and eight tenths look as a decimal and how would it look as a fraction? So three ones, eight tenths, here's three ones, here's eight tenths. So I would draw an arrow going to this one. How about this one? Three decimal zero eight. Is that three and eight tenths? And then look, we have this one. Three decimal eight. Well, I think this is three and eight tenths, where this one is three and eight hundredths. So, I'm going to draw my arrow to there. Alright, now let's try three ones and eight hundredths. Well, we just, we had talked about this one being three and eight hundredths. So, this 
would be the one that matches 3 1's 8 hundredths. But where's the fraction? Well, I see that this one has 3 and 8 hundredths is the fraction. So I'm going to draw my line to there. Now I have 2 1's 8 hundredths. And I have 8 1's 2 hundredths. Well, this is 2 1's and 8 hundredths right here. So I can draw a line from here to there. And this one is another one. 2 1's and 8 hundredths. And then I have eight ones and two hundredths. So this is eight ones and two hundredths. And so is this, eight and two hundredths. And now I've matched all of these fractions and decimals to the unit form. And that'll take care of things for lesson six, where we were using area models and number lines to represent mixed numbers with units of ones, tenths, and hundredths in fraction and decimal form.